Let's continue our differential wine growth setup here by looking at how we can generate a more interesting base shape using L systems. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon, but let's go ahead and drop down a node called the L system node inside Houdini. And the L systems by default are going to give you this sort of a, a tree-ish looking shape. And L systems are kind of used to generate uh, like nature-ish type shapes. They're used a lot to generate trees. Um, they're kind of a thing to uh, simulate how nature creates like plants, basically. But you can use them for a lot of different things, and we're going to you know, generate some interesting shapes using them. But there's some rules that we need to talk about, so let's come over to this rules section. And you can see that there's a bunch of information in here, so let's just erase all this so that we can kind of explain how this is going to work. And there's a lot of things that go into this, so I'm just going to cover you know, just kind of the basics of you know, L systems and, and how they work. If you want to learn more about them, um, the docs are great, so you can dive into there. Um, and I'm sure there's other stuff out there as well for how they work. If I need to go into further detail about them, maybe I will in a future video. But let's just cover the basics for now. And for the starters, we're going to just put something into this premise. So in this premise value, it's going to basically be where our L system is going to start. So there's some different values that you're going to use a lot. And the first one that you're going to use is going to be the F. And the F signifies that we are going to have our starting point and we're going to move forward one step. And we can you know, put a bunch of these together and it's going to move forward a bunch of steps. So let's go ahead and turn our points there. You can see that we are moving forward based off of how many Fs that we have in here. Now we also have the plus and the minus. So if I put a plus in here, it's going to give us an angle that we're going to then move forward for. And that is set by this angle in here. So I can change this and it's going to change the angle. So that's gonna be the default angle. If you use a plus or a minus, it's going to change the angle based off of whatever you have set in here. But we can also set these explicitly. So if I wanted to set this to be positive and then let's, or a plus, and then we can put parentheses and then whatever angle that we want. And you can see that if I set 90, it's going to move 90 degrees forward, I guess. So we can also branch this off. So if I wanted to put this into a branch, I can put down our brackets and then I could put another F after this, and you can see that it's going to branch off here, but it's gonna then continue based off of the last point that we had. So anything inside of the brackets is going to be a branch, and then it'll continue from where it left off before that branch. Now we can also do some other things where we set up variables. So let's put an FF and an A in here. And then we need to set our A. So it's just going to move forward two, and then it's going to do nothing because we haven't defined what our A variable is going to do. So let's set that. So we'll do A equals, and let's just put in like F, F plus F. Now it's going to move forward a couple, and it's going to branch off and go, well, not branch off, but it's going to change based off the angle that we had set. And then we can also throw our A variable back onto the end of this. And now we're gonna get some different generations here. And let's maybe just lower that angle a little bit. So it's going to give us some generations and we see that we have seven generations that are being done here. So that's how many times it's going to repeat those variables. So if I set this down to one, we're just going to get one. If I set this to two, then we're going to get a second generation there and I can you know move this down incrementally and it's going to kind of grow on so a lot of people will do sort of growth animations for plants and stuff this is one way that you can start to achieve those type of effects let's set this back to seven and let's also add in a second rule we'll call this one b and maybe we'll do the same thing but we'll do minus f instead of plus f let's set this to be a b instead of an a 
Now we get this sort of a shape going on and we can add in our A so it's gonna loop back and forth between the two. And we get this sort of a shape in here. Or if we wanna change this to a B, then we get this sort of like a hook type shape that we got going on. So we can get some interesting shapes using that. And this is kind of the basics of how we can go about creating some interesting shapes. So let's make a copy of this. And with this, there are a ton of different shapes that they have discovered online that use different premises and different rule sets. So let's just kind of go over a couple of them. So uh, feel free to Google these, by the way, because they're, like I said, they're kind of all over the place. And um, there's some really interesting shapes that you can get. I'm only going to cover a couple. So I'm going to do F and then we're going to do plus and we'll do, we'll use X this time. So XF plus F and then plus XF. And then I'm just gonna copy in the rule for X because it's kind of long. So pause the video and take a look at that. Here, I'll make this bigger for you. This is our rule. So X equals XF minus F plus F minus XF plus F plus XF minus F plus F minus x. So really long, uh, but we'll see here in a second what this gives us. And anywhere that there is a variable here, it's going to replace that with this with this uh, variable, basically. So keep that in mind. I also need to set the value here. So I'm going to set this angle to be 90 degrees. And now you can see that we get this sort of really large because uh, there's quite a few generations. Let's tone this down a little. Let's set this to like three generations. And now we get a kind of an interesting shape that we got going on here. So really, really kind of weird. Um, but this is uh, one of the ones I found that were kind of cool. So let's like take a look at a couple of other ones. So we'll change our premise to be F plus F plus F plus F. And then we can also, I didn't talk about this, but we can actually define what F is going to do. So we'll do F equals F F plus F plus plus F plus F. And this gives us a really cool square shape. And this is the one that I actually kind of want to plug in first because it presents some unique challenges, but also gives us a really interesting shape. And again, we need to make sure that your angle is set to 90. If you set this to something different, then you're gonna get, well, this, which looks kind of cool to be honest. Um, if you set something different, you know, you get some different shapes. So you can play around with some different things. And honestly, I didn't know that this one did this, which is kind of cool. So let's set this back to 90 and we have this sort of a shape. And you can play around with the generations. So if I set this to like two, it's going to change the size of our square. I can set this up to like seven may not have been a good idea. Uh, but yeah, you see you get much larger shape here. So let's go back to three. And then let's make another copy of this and I'll show you one more before we plug this into our, our differential line growth setup here. So in our rule, let's set this to F plus plus F plus plus F. And by the way, if you if you were to take these like plus and equal signs and you know, let's just make a copy of them and chain them together. So plus F, it's going to make that turn that many times. So we'll do plus, I'll add another plus if it'll let me. keyboard's not working. So there you see we make another turn and then if I add another one, we make another turn and it would work the same if I were to put the minus in there. And again, that's just based off of whatever angle you have set in here. So if I set this to 30 degrees, now we have a 90 degree angle because we've turned three times. So let's come back over to this one and let's create um, this shape. So let's see, I said so F plus plus F, and then we need a second plus in here. So F plus plus F plus plus F. And then for F, we want to set F equal to F minus F minus F plus plus F 
minus f. And for this one, it gives us a, an interesting shape here, but we would need to change our angle to 60 degrees and we get something that is even more interesting. So let's go ahead and take this. I'm gonna transform this just so we can lay it flat. So let's see, which one is it? Yeah, so we'll do 90 degrees. And we can plug this now into our setup here. Let's just do this one. And you can see that we get an interesting starting shape. And again, we are gonna maintain that, that uneven growth along our curve, which doesn't do a whole lot to our shape to start off with because uh, it's kind of moving everything all at once. So let's plug in some of these other ones and we'll see what else we can get with this. So this is that square one. You can see that we get this interesting shape. And again, it's just something else to break up that initial shape. So you can do it based off of um, based off of these initial shapes and just leave it at that and get some, some interesting looks. Or we can take this a step further, which we're going to do in the next video, and we can start to make the growth kind of happen along our along our object. So let's set this back here. So our starting point, let's say it's over here, so we can have it kind of grow along this shape and start to move out while still maintaining the not going over, you know, the shape. So it'll fill in like this area. It'll make more sense as, as we do it, but it'll kind of grow and it'll still recognize that these points exist and not overlap them because that would kind of break the effect. So we'll cover that in the next video. It takes a little bit more of a, of a setup to actually do, and uh, it's, it's not super straightforward because uh, SOP solvers don't necessarily take um, animation into them very well. So we will cover that, but hopefully this has helped you out. And like I said, the L systems, there's a lot to these. So feel free to look into these more on, on your own. There's a lot of information out there. Definitely recommend Googling um, about them to, to get some interesting shapes because there are a lot of interesting shapes that people have you know, discovered out there. And again, you can feel free to play with them on your own. Like we looked at here, we can get some interesting shapes just by you know, changing the, the value here of our of our angle you know maybe 120 we get this weird triangular shape so mess around with those get some interesting shapes and uh, use those to augment your differential line growth just a little bit more anyways thank you guys for watching and have a good day